This video is going to be about using partial fractions to find integrals that involve repeated linear factors. Um, so, for example, uh, let's say that we start with uh, x minus 1 over the quantity x plus 1 cubed. And uh, what I would do here is I would say that uh, I could have had a over x plus 1 plus b over x plus 1 squared plus c over x plus 1 cubed. Um, and adding those together would give me a common denominator of x plus 1 cubed. So I have to consider each of those options. And uh, I go about this in pretty much the standard way. So uh, I'm going to multiply through by the common denominator. And you can see that the powers kind of cancel out. Um, and I get to this point. And here if I let x equal negative 1, um, I should be able to solve for c. So letting x equals 1, negative 1 rather, gives me c equals negative 2. All right, so now what I'm going to do is um, Take a look. So I have this, and I also know that c equals negative 2. So really I have um, x plus 1 squared a, x plus 1 b minus 2 equals x minus 1. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to take the derivative of both sides of this with respect to x. So I've got that. And what I will do from there is uh, simplify that. So I get 2 to the quantity x plus 1 a plus b. Um, and then the derivative of negative 2 is 0. And then on the right-hand side, I just have 1. And now, actually, if I let x equal negative 1, I would get uh, b equals 1. Um, so I know what b is. I know what c is. I still need to find a. So what I will do is uh, take the derivative of 2 to the quantity x plus 1a plus 1, which I've replaced the b with 1 and then take the derivative of 1. So I'm just repeating the process again with this new reduced value. So on the left-hand side, I get 2a. On the right-hand side, I get 0, which means that a must be 0. So I know a, b, and c, which means that uh, I had this to begin with. So I had all that. I knew that a is 0, b is 1, c is negative 2. So really, the integral of x minus 1 over the quantity x plus 1 cubed is the integral of 1 over um, x plus 1 squared dx minus 2 over, um, or 2 times the integral of dx over x plus 1 cubed. And then I can just do that integral to get negative quantity x plus 1 to the negative first, and then plus 2 the quantity x plus 1 to the negative 2 plus c. So let's take a look at one more example of this. It's kind of neat. Um, so here I have one repeated linear factor and one non-repeated linear factor. So I'm going to break it up as usual. a over x, b over x plus 2, c over x plus 2 quantity squared equals the original thing. And what I want to do is multiply through to clear the denominator. So just make sure you do this part right, otherwise you're kind of doomed. Uh, letting x equal negative 2 will solve for c in this case. So I get negative 2c equals, just kind of plug in, blah, 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 I get c equals 3. So now I know what c is. Um, and so we're going to do pretty much the same thing that we did last time. So this is what I had. Um, and now I know that c is 3. So I would replace it. And now I'm going to try taking the derivative to uh, see if that helps me out. I'm pretty sure it will. Like this, derivative with respect to x for both sides. So I get 2, the quantity x plus 2a. If you consider uh, the coefficient of b to be x squared plus 2x, then you can see that the new coefficient when you take the derivative is going to be 2x plus 2. And b, and then the derivative of 3x is 3. And then 6x plus 13. Uh, so looking at this, I can do um, two uh, clever substitutions. So if I let x equal negative 2, that'll give me the value of b. So I know b is 1. And if I let x equal negative 1, that'll give me the value of a. So I get 2a plus 3 equals 7. So I know that a is 2. All right. And so finally, go back and actually do the problem I was supposed to do. 
So I have this. And none of those integrals are particularly hard. So I'll get 2 natural log of the absolute value of x plus natural log of the absolute value of x plus 2. And then minus 3, the quantity x plus 2 to the negative first. And then plus c. Um, so this technique is really useful when you have repeated linear factors. I mean, it's actually always good to kind of try it. Um, but anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.